Lucy's badly treated. Can't believe she's being fed like a dog. And there's a dog collar around her neck. The other end of the chain has been fastened to the wall. She's trying to rip the collar off, but it's to no avail. Escape is impossible. Next day, the staff brought her a collar, which was called the choke collar. They took her out for a walk. She's the only one in the big field. If she didn't run now, when would she run? That's it. A sudden warning came over the loudspeaker. You can only walk. You can't run. Otherwise, you'll suffer the consequences. But Lucy won't listen. The more warnings she got, the harder she ran. A few moments later, she abruptly felt a tightening of the collar around her neck. A feeling of suffocation came over. She forced herself to run to the barbed wire. But the barbed wire was electrified. She was electrocuted as soon as she made contact. The two of them are sleeping that day. The masked man delivers dog food again. Simon takes advantage of the masked man's inattention. He rips through the stick with all his might. He picks up the dog bowl and knocks the masked man unconscious. And takes the key from the masked man. And when they're about to escape, that's when it happens. Friendly reminder. Next, what you're about to see may be more than you can imagine. If you feel a little uncomfortable, skip it quickly. Under the guidance of a woman in white, Lucy walked into a two square meter kennel slowly. She crouched down and bowed her head of her own accord. And the white woman picked up the chains to chain her neck. Lucy not only didn't resist, but she looked happy. The next day, they were set to go out on a field trip. They walked to the fence without a second thought, looking at the freedom that's so close at hand. Lucy started egging Simon on to run away with her, which was part of the experiment, of course. How could she really let him get away? They quickly climbed over the fence. They intended to run as quickly as they could, but before they got so far, the collars around their neck were starting to shrink. An intense sensation of suffocation hit them. Lucy was the first to fall. Simone had a chance to run forward, but seeing Lucy struggling in pain on the ground, he chose to stay. They were once again bound back to the lab. When Simon wakes up again, he's already on the operating table. They're punishing Simon for running away. Simon keeps begging for mercy. The guard pulls out a small syringe. Then he sticks it in him. On the other side, Lucy is also lying on the operating table. Tom takes out a small syringe. Again, he injects her with the drug. Lucy is soon hallucinating. In the hallucination, she is having sex with Simon. At this point, the monitor suddenly goes offline. When Tom comes back, Nina asks him what's going on with the surveillance. To keep things from blowing up, Tom sticks a syringe in Nina's neck again. He didn't think Lucy would be that cruel, but he's got something even more cruel. He pushed Lucy into another room, where Nina and Simon were locked. It was the same switch. Tom's making Lucy choose one or the other. Only one of Nina and Simon can survive. Lucy looked at Nina with affection, who was a good sister for more than 10 years. That's a lot of love for her, and it's beyond the realm of possibility. If Simon died, she can encounter another one. If Nina's gone, all things gone, and that's it. Lucy didn't hesitate to press Nina's name. But what was not expected was, it was Simon's collar that shrunk. It turned out that Tom had already predicted her prediction. He reversed Nina's and Simon's names on purpose, looking at Simon, who's about to choke, and the unsuspecting but grateful Nina. Lucy's badly treated. Can't believe she's being fed like a dog. And there's a dog collar around her neck. The other end of the chain has been fastened to the wall. She's trying to rip the collar off, but it's to no avail. Escape is impossible. Tom follows close behind. When he pulls back the curtain, Nina, who is hiding next to him, throws a wrench at him. When Tom wakes up, he has been strapped to the operating table. But Lucy gave him a taste of what it's like to have his ass cut off. And yet it doesn't end there. Lucy quietly picks up the stick and aims it at Nina. It turns out she's been holding a grudge against Nina all along. She shouldn't have told Simon the truth. Finally, she puts on Nina's glasses, changes into her clothes, and lights the experimental base and leaves in style. No one would know what she does behind her back. Nina is too innocent. After all, as the saying goes, you don't know who you're talking to.